Today we continue the patch FAQ series with automated browser updates. It's like magic. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone, and today is a part of a series we're doing on patching frequently asked questions, FAQs. And we're covering some of the most popular questions that our patch SMEs get asked on a regular basis. Now, have you heard the phrase like mowing the lawn or keeping the lights on, right? It means that stuff you just have to do over and over, and usually there's no shortcut to make it go faster. It's just kind of part of doing life, right? Just mowing the lawn, sometimes they call it, keeping lights on. Well, keeping web browsers patched is a lot like that. You know, there's so many browsers and they pop out updates like rabbits. So how do you just keep up with the sheer volume of all this complexity? So here to shout, share his browser taming wisdom is Jason Wasser. Now you may remember Jason from uh, our, no, our most popular tech talk in 2023 was his episode about zero touch patching. So, so Jason, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back. My name is Jason Wasser. I'm a technical account manager with Tanium and I've been here about six years. My background is in operations. So I used to be a server engineer, a desktop engineer. I did active directory group policy, SCCM management, a whole lot of patching, um, and software management, um, and of course, a lot of PowerShell. Yeah, I remember when I got hired here at Tanium, uh, Jason started right before I did, and yeah. I was following him on Twitter in the PowerShell community, and I remember his avatar mugshot uh, when I logged into Slack for the first time at Tanium, and I saw the same avatar mugshot, I'm like, no way! <laughs> Wasser jaw, right? You know, Jason yeah. Wasser works here at Tanium. So Jason and I got to work together in a number of years. So Jason, before we dive into this, I have a kind of a, a red versus blue question for you. So so what is your favorite browser and why? Uh, I, I have to pick Firefox. Firefox has been there for me for years and years and years. I've tried and used Chrome for a while, Edge. Um, I definitely like Brave, but Firefox has been the tried and true. I, I, and the reason why is actually goes way back to the Internet Explorer days, right? So when I first started working in IT way back when like Windows XP was a new thing, you know, Internet Explorer was it, right? Um, the problem was back then uh, pop-ups were like all the rage, right? You just click on a website, a pop-up, and the I was like, this, I, I, I can't do this. Um, I got to find another way. And I also like wanted tabs, right? Like it was like, why don't we have browser tabs? Internet Explorer was way behind on that. So I, I found this, you know, uh, little project. Um, you know, Mozilla had their their browser suite, but they had a side project called Phoenix. I'm like, let me see this. It was just just a browser, and I loved it. And it went through various name changing, and eventually at 1.0 became Mozilla Firefox, and I've been using it ever since. Wow. Uh, yeah, that goes back. That's yeah. that's great. Um, I I've never been a Firefox person. I mean, I've I've used all the browsers at one point. Um, for work, I use Edge uh, because mm. of having O three sixty five, and maybe just maybe that gets me some extra ease of use. I don't know, uh, but it feels kind of nice to have the Microsoft full experience. But uh, personally, though, I've been using Brave on my because yeah. uh, I've personally I'm a an Apple ecosystem guy. So my phone, my iPad, my MacBook at home, and so uh, for those who are paranoid and want to feel like they've got a little bit extra protection, uh, Brave has been my choice lately. But hey, um, we could always start a nerd fight over in the community discussions. If you go to help.tanium.com and we want to do a nerd fight, just go over there and start a thread on what's your favorite browser and invite us into that conversation. We'd love to do that. But there's more to talk about today because uh, the next question is, okay, if Firefox is your favorite browser, Jason, is it up to date? Of course, my browsers are up to date. I'm a Tanium <laughs> Deploy subject matter expert. I better all have right. my, right? You can't be like the plumber whose toilet never works. I've got to keep all my, <laughs> all my stuff uh, straight. So yeah, browsers up to date. 
All right. Well, walk us through here. Um, this is, wow, talk about a hot topic, how to keep these browsers continually updated. Uh, does this, uh, I would say, does this kind of fall into the zero touch patching? But we're, like you said, well, this is a different module. We're not talking about the patch module. This is the deploy module. Yes. And, and a lot of times it can be confusing. Like, well, because the terminology, right? Am I patching a browser or am I updating it? Uh, what, what am I installing it? And the Tanium deploy module, was designed around software management, right? Making configuration changes or software package install installation changes, updates, removals. And a lot of times the a, a, a big need that we all have is third-party patching. And that's covered through the deploy module. Uh, the, the many uh, third-party packages have their own way of updating. You know, most browsers should update themselves. But sometimes they don't or they can't because maybe the organization blocks it from being updated. Maybe you've heard this before, but uh, just about every month there's a zero day for browsers, right? Uh, Chrome or Firefox or Edge or all of them, right? Um, well, there was one month, I think a couple of months ago, where e every single browser had a zero day. And it was like, what do we do about this? Like, how do we respond quickly? And that's what Tanium is really about, right? That speed and scale the platform of getting data taking action. For most users, the web browser is the internet. They don't even know what you know that is. That's The internet is my web browser, right? Uh, and it's the most used app. We use it for uh, work. We use it for research. We use it for watching cat videos. Sometimes we use it for clicking on phishing links, uh, but don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but we know it's true. And so do the bad guys, right? The bad guys know the best way to get in is through the web browser. Right, users are going to click on things, uh, so we need to keep those browsers up to date. Uh, and and for those uh, that you know, if they auto update, great. But if they don't, let's have Tanium make sure it's coming back around and keeping all those browsers up to date. That's a good uh, little question for a sidebar here. So auto updates versus not. Some companies just let them roll. Maybe smaller environments, I don't know. But other companies, they want to intentionally apply specific versions. What's what's been your experience that you've observed? Yeah, I, I've seen both. You know, the the risk of not doing it typically is because there was that one time where Chrome broke something. Right, Chrome updated. And it broke our line of business application. And it was a bad day. So we never, ever, ever want to do that again. And I feel that pain. And I've been through that. And those are bad days. Uh, and But sometimes it's like scar tissue, right? We just, it it's always sticks with us. But for the amount of zero days with browsers um, and the infrequency of those browser updates going sideways, I, I'm all for just, just let them update. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a controversial decision. Each organization has to make that decision. And Tanium to Deploy can help you do either, right? We can auto-update the latest version, or if you want to control that and say, no, we want to do N-1, then you can certainly do that. Nice. Well, let's see how it works. Well, the first thing we want to do, we're going to walk through this process together of setting up browser patching, but I want you to know that everything we cover in this video is at the Tanium Resource Center. So if you want to go to help, dot tanium.com and search for browser patching so i'm going to do that right now this is the new tanium resource center i search for browser patching and here is the article automate web browser patching with tanium deploy so everything that we're going to cover is in here and by the time you're done this video or reading this article you have will have set up automated patching for your browsers and this is going to cover mac os and windows it's almost like so, you planned this in advance, man. This is great to have these uh, articles for all these FAQs. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, because we, we do get these questions a lot and um, you know, taking the time to make these videos, to write it down, uh, can help everyone. So for Tanium Deploy, we're going to be tying together um, different features of Tanium Deploy to make this automated patch um, patching of browsers. We're going to be using the, the predefined package gallery software bundles, deployments, and maintenance windows. So I'm starting here at the predefined package gallery. Tanium Deploy has almost 400 packages already predefined for you with one-click import, right? So you can actually come here and update, install packages for all kinds of things. In this case, we're talking about browsers. And I said one-click import, but really, it could be no-click import. And that's what we're going to be setting up today. So I'm going to go find Chrome 64-bit. I'm going to click this import settings gear, and I'm going to say, I want you to automatically import the new version as they're released. 
And then I can even say, well, I only want you to keep the latest two versions. So we'll keep the latest version and N minus one. That way we don't have a, a continual pile up of browsers in your environment. Uh, so we're going to do that for Chrome. You can do that for Chrome x86 if you have that in your environment. And then you can repeat this for Firefox, for Edge, for Brave, uh, for all the browsers that you want to have in scope. All right. So we'll I have select. to ask. So you've got the little green import button there and the import settings that look like the default was to automatically update. Is that right? No, I had to turn this on. So by okay. default, it's manual. So I came in and I selected that. And that's okay. what turned this this green A on. So what does it look uh, like? Uh, here's what it looks like. I could, uh, okay. I could import a package here. Mm -hmm. I could also go in here and say, you know what? For Visual C++ redistributable, I want to automatically import it. Keep the latest three versions. Oh, good. I, I, I missed the difference in the icon. Nice. Yeah. So that's automatically importing the latest version of Chrome. We can do that for Firefox. Now, there's a lot of different versions of Firefox in different languages. If you want to include those, you can just maybe start small and expand from there. But once I've set up this auto import, as new versions of the browsers are released, they're automatically pulled into your environment and they're available to you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie that together into a software bundle. Now, a software bundle is a collection of packages that you want to install or remove or update. Uh, sometimes that means they need to be installed in a particular order, as in prerequisites. But in this case, we just want a bundle. We just want a, a bunch of browsers in there. So I'm going to create a new bundle called Browser Updates for Windows. And then I'm going to add all the browser packages that I want to include. So say I want Chrome 64-bit. And maybe I want, let's just say I want Firefox, since that's my favorite. And what we're specifying here is I want the latest version always be a part of this bundle. And then this bundle will be tied to a deployment so that a new browser is released. It's automatically pulled in. It's added to the bundle. The bundle is part of a deployment. The endpoint downloads the browser update and installs it. Now, what we want to do, though, is change the operation. Tanium Deploy has four operation types. Install, Installer Update, Remover Update. Install says if it's not there, get it there. Installer Update says if it's not there, get it there. If it's out of date, update it. Remove, well, it removes. But update is what we want to use. Update says if it's not there, that's fine. Don't install it. But if it is there and it's out of date, let's get it up to date. This way, if you don't like Firefox, and I'm sorry for you, but if someone happened to have installed it, we'll make sure it's up to date. Right. You know, maybe you standardize on Chrome in your environment. You don't want to be caught off guard because someone went and downloaded Firefox and now it's out, out of date. So in this case, we're going to add all the browsers to the bundle using the update operation. And what that looks like here, so I can see I have a, a, a bundle of the three browsers that I care about, and then I tie this to a deployment. Is Once we have built the bundle, uh, you, you can then deploy the bundle. So you click Deploy Bundle, and you give your deployment a name. This is just normal Tanium Deploy procedures for doing deployments, uh, but it, the, the bundle is already selected. You want to choose where you want to send this bundle. In this case, maybe you want all Windows, which might be good because some people install browsers on servers. Or maybe you're saying, look, we just well, let's just focus on the Windows workstations. Uh, we just want to make sure, all, at least on the workstations, all the browsers are up to date. My recommendation, do all Windows if you can get away with it. Just keep all the browsers updated everywhere all the time. The next thing you want to do is, is you can use a deployment template, right? Deployment template predefines a lot of these deployment options that you want to use. But I do recommend a silent install, which just means there's no notifications to the user. It just runs. It can run in the background because browsers can update themselves or we can update the browsers through Tanium Deploy. And we just want them to, to just, just do it. And when the user restarts the browser, they'll get the new version. So when browser updates happen, they actually stage themselves on the disk, waiting for the user to restart. And of course, you can kind of speed up that restart process by configuring group policy uh, using Tanium Enforce, or you could send them a little notification using Tanium Engage and say, hey, your browser needs to be updated. Can we restart it now? Sure. We want to do ongoing deployment. This is that automation piece. This means this deployment will always be available, always going to the endpoints. And as soon as those browser updates roll in, they automatically get pushed out to the endpoints and they can install it either in their maintenance window or just have it installed 24 seven, right? Always be updating those browsers, getting them up to the latest version. So once you build that deployment and configure it and send it out, you can then look at the status, and this is my update browsers bundle for Windows. And I can see that I've, I have machines that are constantly running. So as machines come online, they come back from vacation, or a new Chrome comes out this week, automatically patched, done. 
I don't think about it anymore. It just works. And you can do this for Windows, and you can also do it for Mac OS. So if you have Mac OS endpoints in your environment, create the same type of bundle for Mac OS and deploy that to your Mac OS endpoints. It's a beautiful thing. Wow. And so like, even like, uh, I'm thinking like gold image deployments of workstations as well, like, you know, where maybe it's a few revs. Well, if, if that gold image is more than a day old, there's going to be an outdated browser in it. Exactly. There's a, yeah. Wow. And, and that's the beauty of this type of deployment is if it's a brand new image, if it's, I came back from, you know, a month long vacation, uh, whatever it is, you know, that's going to be uh, updated to the latest version. And, you know, we often talk about uh, showing our work, uh, providing some reporting, some visualization, some dashboarding. In that knowledge article, you can find this importable dashboard, which shows you every single type of browser you have in your environment and the versions that are present there. And so you can use this to help you find out, okay, look like maybe we do have a few people who are out of date in Chrome or Firefox, or I didn't even know we had Mozilla Firefox ESR installed out there. And why are they doing, what are they doing with this old version? Let's make sure we add that to the bundle and get that out there and make sure it's fully patched. What is Vivaldi? I've never heard Vivaldi of Vivaldi is an, another Chromium based uh, browser, but it's extremely customizable to the nth degree. Uh, hmm. Very, very customizable. Yeah, and, that, and that's yep. a, all part of the software gallery. So that's the other, you know, the, the kind of thing that was the the beauty of this is we don't have to go create these packages because we'd be that's we, we'd never get anything else done. That saves your team so much time, and and the the faster you can get these browsers patched, the more safe you're going to be. And of course, you can apply the same methodology to other third party packages. Right. So if there's other gallery packages and you want to keep them up to date, you can use this as a guide or a template to also auto patch those types of, of, of packages. Are there some other popular examples of that? I'm thinking like uh, Zoom or Teams or. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, Zo or... Zoom is in there. Code is in their um, office. Um, we do Windows upgrades. There's Adobe Reader. That's everyone's favorite. There's a ton in here. So yeah, most of the, the common third-party applications that you would often need to patch uh, are available here. Is uh, I think VLC Viewer, is that in there? Yeah, VLC is in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, media that, player. Yeah, it does have uh, vulnerabilities from from time uh, from every now and then, and of course, you don't even necessarily have to pull the the package into your environment. You will just tell you before you even do that. I've got one endpoint that needs an update to VLC. I didn't. Uh, maybe I forgot that I installed it or some user installed it. But now that I know it's here, let me go ahead and import that and update that, or import it and remove it. Right, and that's another workflow you could do is say, let's make sure. If you don't like Firefox, let's make sure we remove it instead of update it. <laughs> if that's well, what you you said, yeah, a corporate standard, right? If you got a corporate standard for your browser or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Right. Anything well, else you want to leave our audience with today before we wrap up? No, I just uh, we've you I just want to say congratulations. If you've been following along, you've just set up automated browser patching, right? That's that it didn't take very long. And the next time the browser vulnerability comes out and your boss is like, What's happening? You're like, you can sit back. Just watch the automation or maybe some more cat videos. <laughs> Happy patching, everybody. If you've been watching this patch FAQ series so far and it's been helpful for you, if it's saving you time in your job, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can simply just shoot an email to go at tanium.com. If some of these tips have have you've got like a great story where Tanium saved your bacon, you know, how many hours a week you used to spend on browser updates, for example, we would love to hear about that. And so we can uh, share, you know, and encourage other people with uh, the results that you can see with uh, the Tanium platform. So Jason, again, thank you for this amazing patch FAQ today with a deploy module and keeping browsers up to date. Make sure to check out in the show notes below in that YouTube description, there a link to the community article at help.tanium.com at the Tanium Resource Center, uh, where it's all documented for you there. And so, uh, again, this is part of a series of patch FAQs. Go watch the other ones here on the, the Tech Talks playlist if you haven't already. And stay tuned because we've got some more coming in this series as well. And until then, go Tanium.